If you fail civil services, uh, do not fret. There are plethora of opportunities available for you. In truest sense, the world will be your oyster and you can create large-scale impact by launching your own ventures, while working closely with the government, or by joining great consulting organizations who work very closely with the government. The second point, again, is very important. And this is uh, what should be your ideal plan B when you're preparing for civil services. Hi, everyone. I hope you all are doing fantastic. First and foremost, thank you so much for showering so much love on me based on the last video that I made on YouTube about how to go about preparing for civil services. I really thank you all for sending such wonderful messages on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Uh, my sincere apologies if I could not respond to you on LinkedIn. I have a terribly managed inbox there, but I try my best to, to clear all the messages on various other platforms that I'm able to manage properly. Through this YouTube channel, my goal is to ensure that all the good people, all the wonderful people like you, go on to occupy important positions across the globe, and this will have a meaningful impact on millions of lives. A few years ago, I was um, invited to speak at IT Delhi, and uh, this is one question that I pose to everyone in the audience, that what's the worst thing that could happen to any, any nation? And um, students came with millions of answers. One answer has stuck with me for the rest of my life, and that is terrible people occupying important positions in our country. If you can change that, if you can ensure that good people, incredible people, if they occupy important positions, many of the perils of our country uh, can be solved for. So my goal through the entire journey of YouTube would be to ensure that wonderful people appear for civil services exam. And if for some reason it doesn't work out, there are millions of other ways through which you can contribute to the growth of this nation. Um, so if you're new to this channel, subscribe to it. And so in this video, I'll talk about three extremely important things. And I hope these points give you some solace, some confidence, and some ability to perform exceptionally better in your civil services exam and in your life in general. The first point is, um, and again, this is very important for those who failed their exam uh, a few days ago. The first point is, how does life look like when you fail civil services? Is it uh, that bad? which is usually depicted in movies or TV shows, or can you really make the best use of that opportunity and carve out an incredibly important and uh, unique life for yourself? There are many examples. There is Arvind Subramanian who failed his exam in UPSC and today he went on to become the chief economic advisor in India. And if I'm not wrong, he's currently teaching a professor at Harvard Kennedy School and Chicago Booth School. There's, uh, there's Geeta Gopinathan, who again failed the exam and went on to become the head of, of IMF. Her husband, uh, ironically, cleared the civil services and then left and quit the civil services to carve out a different path for himself. So, and a similar story, not uh, that exceptional, has been at my end as well. When I failed my exam a few years ago, I missed the final list by around eight marks. Uh, scored highest in, in my optional paper, that was uh, political science and international relations, and second highest around 204 in my interview. And despite all the endeavor, despite many lucks, I could not clear the exam and, and get my name and find my name in that coveted list. And coming to think of it, I had the incredible opportunity to work with governments, had the phenomenal time working in international affairs in New York, and also carved out uh, a niche where we are launching startups and uh, also invest in a lot of startups in, in South Asia. So life after failing civil services uh, cannot be all gloomy. It can happen if you're diligent about it. I think uh, we can carve out a better professional path for yourself. Before I build on to the second point, I also want to note this that uh, the world today has dramatically changed and transformed. Uh, government of India and in fact many other governments will provide incredible opportunities for folks in consulting, or in different life paths and give them the position of responsibility in public policy. A uh, few of my friends have gone on to become OSDs in the ministries. There are good examples of people like Pratik Doshi who went on to become OSD to the Prime Minister of India. He began his life as uh, an intern in, in, in his office when, when Prime Minister Modi was the then Chief Minister of Gujarat. His example of uh, Futsav Mitra who went on to become OSD to uh, the, the Honourable Minister for Railways in India. And after his uh, stint as an OST, when he graduated from SRCC, went on to become OST, he went to Harvard Business School, and now he works in private equity somewhere in Singapore. 
Uh, so there are many examples like them. In fact, a few months ago, uh, our scholars at GGI were interviewed for the position of officer in special duty in the office of uh, the former finance minister, Jayan Sinha. So there are many opportunities that you can carve out for yourself. And uh, in fact, the current civil aviation JS, Joint Secretary, uh, he was not, he's not a civil servant. He began his life in KPMG and now he's doing incredibly well uh, through his endeavors in the government. So if you fail civil services, uh, do not fret. There are plethora of opportunities available for you. In truest sense, the world will be your oyster and you can create large scale impact by launching your own ventures, while working closely with the government, or by joining great consulting organizations who work very closely with the government. The second point, again, is very important, and this is uh, what should be your ideal plan B when you're preparing for civil services. Here, I would want to gauge and quantify, to some extent, your decisions. First and foremost, the most important thing to note here is, uh, do not compromise on your plan A, because you want to carve out a good plan B. Your plan A is to become an IS officer or a foreign service officer, and in no situation, that should be compromised. But in many cases, it gets compromised because people take unnecessary stress and they develop a lot of anxiety, wondering and thinking what will happen to them if they end up failing in civil services. And in true honesty, they're not wrong. Because uh, UPSC, for a lot of many youngsters, uh, go on to become a five-year commitment. And uh, after the long drawn cycle of examination, it is extremely difficult to justify your gap years to your future employers or to the MBA schools that you might apply for, so on and so forth. And therefore, having a plan B, in some way or the other, will ensure that you are calm, you, have, you do not have the anxiety, and in many cases, you will perform better than your counterparts who consider this exam to be a do and die situation. So the plan B, what should be an ideal plan B for you? The first example of plan B could be group B exams that many youngsters give. Group B could be in state services exams, or in bank PO exams, or via Reserve Bank of India exams, so on and so forth, even though RBI is Group A. But that's not the first primary mode of choice. The choice was to become a collector and not to become a deputy collector. Uh, so here you will definitely have the job security if you go on to achieve and clear these exams. But unfortunately, I'm not sure how much, how much satisfaction you will have while following the dreams that are compromised. Because when you began preparing for the exam, your goal was to become an IS officer. It was not to become a Group B officer. And if you end up becoming a Group B officer for the rest of your life, uh, you will contemplate and think and hate your life for, for not being able to follow through on your dreams. Every day you'll be reporting to someone who is a lot younger than you, and that might, in some way or the other, deteriorate your life satisfaction or job satisfaction. It's a good plan B, but equally difficult to crack for it, and therefore, I would scale it around, you know, in terms of job security, it's five and five, but in terms of satisfaction, it should be three on five and keeps on going down as you grow with your age. The second plan B um, would be to enroll in random master's degree program. This could be at IGNU or JNU, the list is endless. People do this because they think that, they, that it might help them save um, their time. It will also help them justify their gap years. But I think uh, in some way or the other, this will deteriorate your chances of getting into good business schools if and when you decide to pivot. The last plan B could be to work with, uh, to take a different trajectory altogether. Work in UN, work in World Bank, work, work with BCG or McKinsey, go to Harvard Business School, go to Harvard Kennedy School, go to Fletcher School, and this will allow you and open you to a new life altogether. I will have biases for this plan because I went on to follow through on the same trajectory. Um, you will be studying with incredible people, you will be working with incredible people, you will learn really good skill sets on the go. And uh, so here I will rate job security around three on five, but this will keep on increasing because uh, your skills keep on impro improving. Today I have many job offers and, and I have the freedom and luxury to decide whether I should take it or not. And that has been the case with many of my friends who went on to study at these universities. And if you want to get into Harvard or Stanford or work with the UN or World Bank, you need to be diligent whenever you're preparing for civil services. The goal should be to clear the exam in one go. And if for that, and if for some reason that doesn't happen, we have a very well-defined GJ Impact Fellowship that might help you pivot into your plan, plan B, the third stage of plan B, uh, if and when you decide to pivot uh, from civil services. But again, having plan B will keep you safe 